Once upon a time, in a faraway land, there was a tiny village by the name of Kameki. Legend tells of a horrible beast that threatened the residents. It also tells of the wolf that risked it all to protect them. Controlling the very fabric of existence, this wolf stood up against a beast many times its size and banished the darkness. This ethereal wolf's valiant act ushered in an era of tranquility. The villagers' hearts swelled with respect and adoration of the wolf. It's happening. <laughs> Okami finally went into one, didn't it? It's, a, it's funny, I've actually... So I'm wearing my Okami shirt right now, which I actually wore in the Beastars video, but it's really hard to see in that part with where the Berserk uh, volumes are in frame. Uh, I've had an Okami shirt for fucking ever because it was like a one-day offer on like T-Fury or something, like probably like 15 years ago or something like it was so long ago and I was like oh that game looks cool I always wanted to play that I should g and like the shirt's not gonna be available soon so I should, I'll, I'll just get, I guess I just, and I just I just bought it so I've had an Okami shirt forever it's like stained pink because I got washed with something something else but that works anyway so I don't mind but uh, this, this is one of the oldest shirts I probably own and it's for a game I still haven't played until today I guess this keeps trying to restart Freaking old, old-timey intros. That said, I've been a little, I've been a little, uh, leery about it winning because I looked it up on how long to beat a while ago, and it's longer than Skyward Sword! Oh my god! Y'all just volunteered not to vote for several months. <laughs> For longer than you'd expect on PC, honestly. Is it doing the thing where it replays the intro I just read? Long, long ago, a tiny hamlet known as Kamiki lay nestled in a grove of proud and beautiful cherry blossoms. No, this is different. Each and every tree around the quiet burg was honored as a god. However, the village was not without its dark secrets. To satiate the appetite of Orochi, a fearsome cave-dwelling beast, a young maiden was offered as a sacrifice at the annual festival. With a body like a mountain and eight heads mounted on necks the size of tree trunks, its blood-red eyes were said to curse anyone who gazed into them. No one dared disobey the horrific beast. When the night of the sacrifice drew near, a mysterious white wolf appeared outside the village. This wolf, its coat as brilliant as snow, w was dubbed Shiranui. Shiranu Shiranui. The wolf kept a watchful eye on anyone who ventured outside the village and made a habit of patrolling the streets at night. People assumed the wolf to be a familiar of Orochi. They're not doing any subtitle discipline here, where you try to separate it into like phrases and sentences. 
It's just like, I don't know, we hit the character limit. <laughs> One villager took it upon himself to face the fearsome Shironi. The warrior, Nagi, attempted many times to challenge the wolf. But his attempts were thwarted by Shironi's swift movements. Before long, the light of the accursed festival had arrived. A white-plumed arrow heralded the coming sacrifice. Piercing the sky, the arrow sunk its shaft squarely into... the home of Nami, the village's most beautiful maiden. Nagi, harboring a secret love for Nami, was enraged by this sign. Determined to put an end to Orochi once and for all, Nagi traveled to the beast's cave in place of his beloved. The Moon Cave, a place as dark as evil itself, served as Orochi's home. As Nagi stood bravely before the entrance, a beast appeared, eyes glowing crimson upon eight thrashing necks. Orochi stood tall before him, anxious for another sacrifice. Nagi leapt with incredible grace, swinging his blade valiantly. On and on he sliced, well into the moonless night. But Orochi's hide was like steel. The blade left nary a scratch. At long last, Nagi, his eternal... His energy sp uh, spent from the intense battle dropped to his knees, fatigued and gasping for breath. He knew he was staring death in the face. It was then that the wolf appeared. As if to protect Nagi, it stood its ground before Orochi. In the darkness of the cave, the wolf's coats shone brilliantly. Alas, it was Shioni, the wolf, that dwelled outside the village. Bearing its fearsome claws, Shiranui left toward, uh, toward Orochi. Orochi reared its terrifying heads, readying its fangs for battle. The two beasts struggled wildly, thrashing in the darkness. Mysterious and terrifying, the spectacle continued. Shironi summoned gusts of divine wind to counter Orochi's flames. As Orochi closed in on Shironi, sharpened claws glistening, a gigantic tree suddenly sprouted forth, shielding the wolf. Shironi fought gallantly to gain the upper hand, however, Orochi, protected by a, a mystical power, was not easily bested. Shironui covered in gashes, majestic coat dyed crimson, stood exhausted before the mighty Orochi. Orochi saw a chance to strike would be the final blow. But Shironui refused to give in with its last ounce of strength. The majestic wolf gazed heavensward and unleashed a mighty howl. Suddenly the black clouds overhead dissipated. The light from above glinted off Nagi's sword as a beacon of hope. Guided by his sword, Nagi, who had been taken, had taken shelter from the shadows, stood proudly to face his adversary, channeling all his strength into his scarred and battered arms. He leapt ferociously toward Orochi, his sword poised high. The golden sword danced in his hands like a puppet on a string. One by one, Orochi's fearsome heads separated from their owner. Orochi's broken body collapsed in a lake of its own blood. In that instant, the curse that plagued the villagers was lifted. As the battle subsided, the sun shone once again in the sky. 
Chironui had succumbed to Orochi's poison and struggled to breathe. Nagi scooped the beast into his arms and returned to Kameki. When they reached the village, Shironoi was no longer moving. The village elder gently stroked the wolf's head. In response, Shironoi let out a hoarse and pitiful bark, then closed its eyes and drifted off as if into slumber. Peace had at last returned to Kamiki Village. In honor of Shirani's heroic ex exploits, the villagers erected a shrine and placed a statue of the wolf within it. Nagi's sword was christened Tsukuyomi and placed inside the moon cave. The villagers all look forward to an age of endless peace. However, this is not the end of the story. There is more to this tale than most people know. One hundred years had passed since Nagi and Shironui's heroic exploits. It happened so quickly that no one in the village even took notice. I don't know, it seems like an entire generation of life would happen in that time, unless you got surprises for me. I feel like you'd notice your whole life happening. Whoops, a hundred years passed. Didn't even register that that happened. They, like, blinked. Is this the legendary sword? Is this Tsukuyomi? The sword that banished the dreaded Orochi? No. It couldn't be. It's just a legend. Nothing but a fairy tale. He who seeks power, he who has broken my bonds, speak the words I wish darkness unto the world. Utter that prayer unto me and unleash my power. Well, you fucked up. Is the whole shrine coming with it? A horrible tragedy suddenly swept over the land. However, there was one village that seemed to escape the terrible curse. The tiny settlement of Kamiki Village enjoyed the protection of a sacred tree. It is here that the real story begins. Wood Sprite Sakya, with a weird space before Sakya. How troublesome. This is just like the ancient prophecy of doom. <laughs> Whoopsie! That had transpired to bring about... What has transpired to bring about such calamity? We must act quickly. There is no time to lose. My power has diminished over the years I've spent protecting this area. I don't have much time left in this world. I'm at Terasu. Now is the time. We have never needed your power more. Shine your divine light upon this broken and polluted world. 
Let your heavenly rays become our hope as you guide us all. Okami Hamatrasu. Ah, such divine white light, such beauty and grace. The only one capable of such a wondrous spectacle is none other than our mother and the origin of all that is, Amaterasu. How delightful to see that the savior whose brave sacrifice sealed away the evil demon so many years ago has not changed one bit. Seeing you emerge after so many years spent in a, as a statue brings happiness to my heart. Sniff. <laughs> Amaterasu, gaze above you and take in the condition of the sky. Since your untimely departure from our midst, the world has succumbed to devious and vicious beasts. They have ravaged our fine and, b and bountiful country of Nippon. But never have the circumstances been worse than they are at this very moment. Please use your powers to banish the darkness and punish those who would do us harm. Hmm? Eh? What is this? Has something stolen its way into my robe? Distressing? Ho ho ho! Oh! <laughs> Well, phew, what on earth? You again? Oh, wow, 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 are you nuts? Boy, for a little thing, you sure make a big fuss. I was just trying to make the conversation a bit more interesting, that's all. So that the whole game's gonna do this, or it just kind of line breaks whenever it runs out of space, and that's it. It is a PS2 game, they didn't have a lot of space to work with. Were you napping in my clothes again, Bug? Bug? I told you a thousand times not to call me that. You're gonna be an obby, aren't you? I'm a wandering artist. The name's Isun. Wandering artist Isun. I'll show you just how great I am, and it won't be long till you're bowing before my great brush. Pfft. I mean, it's a lot better than I can do. Well, what do you think? Even cuter than the real thing, no? What's with you, furball? You look kind of down in the dumps. Actually... You look kind of familiar. Got it. You look just like that statue of Shirani. Whoa. Well, that's one way to get it. Nope. Aw. Whoa, what do you think you're doing? Trying to save yourself from like dozens of hours listening to me talk? Are you crazy? A handsome guy like me should never be covered in wolf slobber. You'll regret messing with the great Isun. Don't make me use my prized sword, Denkomaru, against you. Is this berserk? Are we having a berserk? Are you are you the, the fairy from berserk? All the way down to the dynamics of being like, I'm gonna use my sacred technique with the stupid palms. What's that growling sound? And why is it so dark anyway? Oh, great god, Amaterasu. I've used all the power I have to protect Kamiki village. The village lives on. Their spirits lie encased in my fruit. Cut it free, and the village will be reborn. I trust in you. I know that you will lead us down the right path. Only your awesome power can restore life to the world. The trees return to, to, return to normal, huh? That Sakia girl sure said some weird stuff. The villagers' spirits are beginning to are being kept inside the fruit. 
That's the fruit. That girl said that. If you cut it down, the village will be restored. But it's awfully high up there. If you don't use some kind of special power, there's no way you're going to reach it. This darkness is really getting to me, too. A lot can happen while you're ta taking a nap. I gotta check, like, settings. Ooh, menus. Look at all this style. Close fan and resume game. Is there a settings menu? Maybe select? Remember the select button? We used to have a select button. Original settings? Oh, loading screen minigames and aspect ratio. That's it. That's it for quote-unquote original settings. What a thing to call that. There we go. Controller settings. Sure. Not a lot of settings then. Unless sound has subtitle settings in it. It does not. I was definitely hoping... Display? Oh, graphic settings. Alright, well. Things are a bit limited. I'm like, can we make the font smaller so that more text fits on the screen? Cause, or, or have a faster rate at which the text fills in so I can not be caught. I'm, I'm, I'm constantly getting weirdly throttled by the rate at which the text fills in while also having it only show like part of a sentence at a time. We're just gonna live with it, I guess. It's time to do the thingy. The thing, the, the specific thing this franchise or game is known for. I guess there's a, I guess it has another one on DS or something. So it's a franchise. So how do I do the thingy? Where are we? It got awfully quiet all of a sudden. I don't remember any place like this in the village. Well, we better keep our eyes peeled. You can use the right stick to look around. LB changes your point of view. Boy, you really look so helpless. You sure you're gonna be okay? A significant zoom out, but it's also a lower, a higher angle, so it's hard to see around you in the distance. Here we go. My favorite, uh, I think my, maybe after Breath of the Wild, my fi oh. Ew. Sorry. There we go. Nope. Oh. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that was that was a bit of a mind game. So as somebody who normally inverts Y and that's it. This is a game from a specific era of old Japanese video games where the X axis was consistently inverted. So I, this is a this is a thing it's a bit of a thing that came went back and forth before but like so I got used to inverting Y axis because of Halo, because I think that was like what it was bot like by default or something like that. I don't remember. But when I was playing Halo on in like when I was eleven, uh, I got really used to playing with uh, an inverted Y axis, and that's stuck. But also, I do remember like playing Dynasty Warriors back in the day a lot, and those games often had a confusing thing where like the X axis was inverted by default, and so. In this case, if I want to play with an inverted y-axis, what I need to do is go into the settings and set it to invert x-axis. Because by default, it's x and y-axis are both inverted by modern standards. <laughs> this game, that is a mind break. So it just took a few iterations to realize how to get there, to like know how to invert y-axis but not x-axis. I have to set it to invert x-axis because both of them were already inverted. <laughs> That's a trip. But yeah, I, th I think probably after Breath of the Wild, Twilight Pr Princess is probably my favorite Zelda game. And so, this game comes with both the promise and the threat of being an entire game of Wolf Link. <laughs> Which is like, 
one, playing as Wolf Link and seeing Wolf Link was pretty cool. It's just that the actual content involved in playing as Wolf Link was kind of bad. The combat was shallow, and the only real up, the, the primary upside was just the, uh, uh, was just like the very, very funny howling mini game that you would do in, in, as the uh, stand in for the usual uh, music mini games. But I'm imagining that the game where you play as Amaterasu for the entire game is probably a lot more in depth and not as kind of disappointing as Wolf Link was. Because definitely, as much as I like that it's the game where you play as Wolf Link, uh, I generally was like, all right, let's get through this part to get back to being regular Link because they're not, it's not the best parts of the game. Hold on. That's an origin mirror. They say once your reflection appears on its surface, your memories will be, be stored in the mirror for all eternity. It's a save point. Well, to put it shortly, you can save your progress here. All right. And let me give you a little advice. You should save a number of game files. That way, you could always go back if you get stuck or something. Is this a game you can get stuck in? That's very unlike Zelda. Gotta be prepared, especially when you're learning the, the ropes. Yeah, this is one of the ongoing games that would come up a lot in discussion of Zelda likes. And I don't entirely know how true that is yet, but it, that's usually what is mentioned. Along with like Beyond Good and Evil and some other ones along the years. Which I did play Beyond Good and Evil. And it was a mix of really cool and in some ways disappointing, but it was, it was cool to finally see the, one of those iconic games that comes up a lot, and we're doing that now! I put this game off for so long, but I guess it's a good thing, because now I can do it for the channel, whereas I would have been like, Oh, this is one of my childhood games, when it, or teenage games that I played eight years before my, I started my channel or whatever. Look at all those pots just waiting to be broken. If you bust them, there might be something good inside. Press X to bust them with your head. Old school tutorials. Oh my god. Way to go, my furry friend. You can do that anytime you see something you can break. Okay. There's such a nuance to tutorials. I think it's often best if you just directly reward people's curiosity. And just encourage them to figure things out a little bit more on their own, basically. There we go. I'm kind of... I don't like how low the angle is. Even if it's better art. I keep wanting to make the camera look up more. <laughs> whoa, whoa, hold on there, furball. Get a load of that. That chest looks mighty tempting. Let's go check it out. Getting up that high ought to be a piece of cake. Press A to jump. Then press A again to do a wall jump. But make sure you press it firmly so you jump really high. I think it's made slightly worse by the fact that he just talks slowly. <laughs> like the text just isn't very fast. I knew you could do it. They say good luck is found in high places. So keep your eyes peeled. We don't want to miss any treasure. Eh. Did I hit it? I hit it. I was trying to go to the front and open it. It's the holy bone. Yes. Small holy bone. Amaterasu's favorite snack restores three units of solar energy. Now or like later? Okay, it's, on, it's hanging out on the side of the screen, it looks like. I'm just obliterating the stuff around me. Oh, the yen, the yen coins are tiny. Do they just like suck to me? Nope. They do, they do, they do kind of, but I, I can't just like move on and assume that they, that got them. Because that one was, that one was just sitting there. Do not believe in self. What use has a god for coins? Looks like the bridge is out. It's almost like you're gonna have to do that double jump I just said. This shouldn't be so hard. Um, Amaterasu, was it? That's kind of long. Might if I call you Ami? Listen, Ami. Ever heard of Spirits of the Brush? Oh, we're doing that. Never mind. Good brush work has its own soul. At least that's what they say. Just watch. It'd take all day to explain. A picture's worth a thousand words, right? It's the thing that the franchise is known for besides being a dog. Nice, huh? Just a little technique I've mastered called rejuvenation. It's one of my it's one of many brush techniques that use divine power. It's a brush god power that can restore broken or missing things. 
I've practiced really hard just to master this one technique. But there are 13. Each one is, pa is a power of one of the 13 brush gods. Originally, all th 13 were a single, powerful deity. When the deity died, its power was split into 13 separate gods. The gods now dwell within objects all around us, but... God or no god, how could anyone have the power to master all 13? And, and before that exact thing do happen... Well, there we go. That's what I thought that was going to happen the moment we got started. I thought we were going to go in and, uh... Like, cut down that fruit. I'm like, oh, here comes the tutorial for the thing I know about, and then it didn't happen. But that's, that's, that's the only amount of not blind I am, is that I just know the basic premise of that... Amaterasu has a brush power, or maybe this bug does, I don't know. Uh, and you play as a wolf, and it's maybe like Zelda in some ways. And I think it's made by Capcom, which, which notably made some of the Zelda games people really like, including the the first one I played was uh, Oracle of Seasons. I don't know how much I played of it, because it wasn't very consistent about beating games as a kid, but I played Oracle of Seasons, so for a very long time, the only Zelda game I'd ever played until this channel started basically was one made by, by Capcom. And I didn't know it wasn't made by Nintendo that whole time, until like recently, I feel like. Because I'm like, it's a, it's a Zelda game, obviously, it was made by Nintendo, right? That's how, that's how that works. Oh, and like a mountain of furry art, obviously. I mean, I'm not, I'm not gonna fucking pretend. <laughs> It's like, there's, this is a character that has been maintained space in the public consciousness via the furry fandom to some extent. Anyway, I can just feel the these episodes aren't long enough criticism in the comments, but...